my people. At last, it's that time of year that we all love so much and is known by several millions of names. The most famous, of course, being Halloween. Then we've got Samhain, the Celtic name, the end of the year, the start of winter. So whatever you celebrate this particular season for, this is my video for the witchcraft superstitions, traditions and practices that you can use for that wonderful Sabbath, Halloween. Hey how for Halloween, I the witches to be seen, some in black and some in green. Hey how for Halloween. That's an old Scots rhyme from the 1600s and even then it was known that this is our time, the time for witches. So what is the Sabbath of Halloween? Well, it's the third of the three harvest festivals that happen throughout the year. The first being Lunasa, the second being Mabon, and this is the last. This is the Blood Festival. This is when our ancestors brought down the stock from the hillsides and those that they could not keep through the winter, they would slaughter. So it is filled with blood, essentially. The blood was also used by our pagan ancestors to anoint the stone circles of our Neolithic past. They were keen to purify the cattle and the sheep before winter starts because this is also the last night of the year, New Year's Eve, if you will. The first thing you must always do on Halloween is prepare for it. But the main point of preparing for Halloween is to clean, to clean your aura, to clean your soul and to clean your house. It's really important to get rid of any negative energies and emotions as we're going into the new year. One of the best ways to purify your home as well is not just to clean it, it's also to use an incense blend. Now I'm going to recommend that the herbs of a Samhain are those that are the oak, hazel and sage. And all you need to do is go and get some leaves of these three plants or one of them and tie them up, dry them somewhere warm and airy and then you can use this to purify and cleanse your home's aura. Another great herb of this time was mullein and these are known as hag's tapers. They would cut down these stalks and dip them into tallow and use them as torches. Once these are burnt down the ash that was left over was considered an excellent substitute for graveyard dirt according to a grimoire of 1506. So there you go. If you don't wish to use graveyard dirt, and I'm always a bit dubious about that because you know you can attract not the greatest things, why don't you use the burnt remains of a mullein? It is at this time when the season of light is changing to the season of dark that the veil between the worlds is at its thinnest and the dead can walk. This also happens at Beltane, which is the spring festival. Now these two days are very uncanny, but this one, as we move into the season of darkness, is the most uncanny because November is the season of the dead and the season of witches actually as well, but mainly the season of the dead. Traditionally, for witches, we are at the height of our power. We would initiate new members into a coven around Halloween and we would greet our masters, the old ones, the bucca, which uh, the Christians took into being the devil, but not necessarily. These are just the old gods that people may have worshipped. Pagans, that is. This was taken by the Christians when they were incorporating Halloween into their faith in order to bring the pagans under control. I've read so many books on this subject about the origins of Halloween. The, our modern day Halloween is of course a mishmash of the British Isles and the North American traditions put together. As far as we can see, Halloween started out as the slaughter of the livestock and the purification of the earth, the reseeding of the earth with blood in order that the crops can grow next year, and the welcoming in of the darker half of the year, and the season of winter begins. It is the, considered the start of New Year because as with all births, when you give birth you go from darkness into light and so now this is the darkness of the world and we will come into light as we go and so therefore this is the witches and the pagans New Year. There are so many traditions concerning it, mostly bonfires it's because this is a Celtic fire festival. And so you must go out and light a bonfire on the top of the highest hill you can find to light the way, scare off us witches, because you don't want us hanging around. We might curse you. 
This bonfire has a purpose. With the smoke, it will purify the land. With the blood that you spilt from the slaughtered animals that you could not feed through the winter, you would seed the land. And so therefore, this is a very sacred time of year. Witches, of course, would dance around bonfires, but this is just a pagan relic, really, because they danced around the bonfires. I mean, most people, if you see a bonfire, it's natural to have a go dancing around it. Well, I, I, well, or is that just me? I dance around quite a lot of bonfires, but they're fun. You know, who doesn't love a bonfire after all? These bonfires were the need fire. You would take the lighted stick from this fire and light your hearth with it. And this is something that as a witch I do. I will clear out my hearth, I will lay it with new and fresh wood. I'll probably get the chimney cleaned as well because you don't want to have anything untoward happening over the year. And then I will light it from my sacred flame, whatever that sacred flame is. And a sacred flame is merely a flame that you have dedicated to this purpose. It is a tradition that you do not let your hearth go out on this night. So should you light a candle for tonight's activities, then make sure it can safely burn through the night. The name Halloween was only popularised during the Middle Ages, quite a modern name for this festival. Before then, it was known by different names, such as Samhain, the winter's start, Duck Apple Night is a particular favourite in Liverpool because, of course, we celebrate with apples. Apples are huge in October, as my October video will tell you all about. And the apple was abundant at this time of year. And so you would use it in your practice. So for this celebration of Halloween, why not use apples as part of your offerings and your spells? The most uncanny part of this festival is midnight. This is when a witch's power is at its peak and the dead will speak. It is at midnight that if you wish to know who's going to die in the parish throughout the year, that you should go and hide out in your church porch and the wraiths of those who are living, all dressed in their best, or possibly dressed how they're going to die, pass through. If they come out again, it is said that they've just had a really serious illness where they're on the brink of death. It is also at midnight that you can use divination skills and there is no more traditional divination spell than the following. I want you to light your room solely with candles and stare into a mirror. Take an apple in your left hand and begin to eat it and with your right hand brush your hair. So brush your hair, eat your apple and over your left shoulder in the mirror in front of you you'll see the face of your loved one or future partner. However, you might not see their face. You might see the face of a devil. And in that case, I think uh, immediately do some purification ceremonies, especially on the mirror. Mirrors are terrible at being portals. They can let all sorts of things in. So beware and be warned. This is a good one if you wish to know who you're going to end up with. And I've actually, I do know people who've done this spell, um, much to their horror, in fact, because it's quite a scary one. I'm not sure I'd like to do this spell. I have enough visions of my own to deal with without, you know, bringing them on forcefully. The reason why divination is such a tradition at this time is because the creases between seasons, so the point of midnight between the dark half of the year and the light half of the year, is when we are able to look at not just the past, but the present and the future. So do have a go at any divination at midnight on Halloween. I mean, water divination is a great one to do here because you'll get some really clear imagery. The best way to do water divination, in my opinion, is to light some candles. Again, everything should always be done by candlelight. And at midnight, take your copper bowl, fill it with moon water if you've got it, otherwise just spring water is fine, and then open your eyes and stare into that bowl and see what you can see. And visions will either come through the cloudiness of the water or they'll come straight into the forefront of your mind. However, you must ask a specific question, otherwise you'll tend to be shown jumbled images. So make sure you can say, am I going to uh, get a new car next month? And you should be able to see yourself driving that new car or not, as the case may be. Halloween is not just known as the time for witches, it's also known as the time for the fae, the fairies, the good folk, the fair folk. 
This is when, apparently, the fairy mounds will open and you can see the fairy feasting and dancing and drinking and carousing in their homes. However, you shouldn't go looking for them because they might capture you. And if they capture you, you're stuffed. You could be there for seven years because the fair folk do like to capture the young and the beautiful. I mean, luckily, the old and the haggard, like me, they're not so keen on. It's you young and pretty ones that they want. They like to keep you for seven years, but they do give you as a present and a thanks for keeping you for seven years. They do give you the gift of power over magic. So, you know, swings and roundabouts, swings and roundabouts. But it's in order to stop the fair folk from coming into your house and snatching you away or your beautiful babes, then you need to leave them offerings because they'll be distracted by the bread and the nuts and the apples and the ale that you'll leave by your hearth. And they particularly like these forms, especially hazelnuts, because hazelnuts at this time are also at their strongest. And you should eat hazelnuts before you do any divination because it will really help you to open up your third eye. But leaving a hazelnut on your hearth with some apples and some bread and a cup of ale is the perfect way to deter the fairies from stealing any of your family away. It also has the added benefit of being there for when your ancestors come and visit you, because this is the day when the veil between the worlds is at its thinnest. Your ancestors might like to visit and they love an offering just as much as the next person. And so it does a double you know, whammy. You can keep away the fae and welcome in your ancestors by leaving them bread and nuts and apples, especially apples, because apples are food of the dead and they love an apple. If you hear on Halloween night some crows cawing around your house, then this is an indicator that sadly something animal or vegetable or mineral or human will die within your doors. So just don't listen out for them, I think, is the answer to that. It's a bit like when my children were young and they used to climb to the top of very tall trees or something and then stand there going, look at me, mummy, I'm so wonderful. And I would say, if I don't look, I don't, they won't fall. I think that possibly is the same with crows. If you don't look or don't listen, you can't hear and it's not going to happen. One of the traditions that they don't do anymore in this country was they have given up the tolling of the church bells. If you wanted to keep evil away from your house, you would ring a bell at midnight. And so churches would toll at midnight to mark this point. And it's unfortunate that this still doesn't happen because I rather like this one. If you wish to protect your home, why not play some really loud rock music around it? Great for getting rid of those pesky demonic entities. So I've only got a couple more spaces left. I think there's literally two um, for my retreat at the end of November. If you'd love to come and join us and me, Ginny Metherill, then just go to my website, ginnymetherill.co.uk and all the details are there for you. However, if you do just want to learn witchcraft on a one-to-one, -one, go to my Patreon page, which is again, patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill. And there will definitely be something to appeal to you there. Otherwise, I'd love it if you would like and subscribe because subscribing really fills my soul with joy. And let me know how you're going to celebrate your Halloween. And I will see you in my next video.